Welcome everyone to another night review. Today we have this 2022 Honda Civic Touring and we're gonna take a full look at all these exterior lights, the interior lights, and get it out on the road and take it for a drive so you can see how well it does. Now let's start off on the front. If this is your first time tuning in for a night review, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe for more night reviews. But the good news for 2022 is LED headlights, high and low beams are standard on every single model, including the LED daytime running light, that light that's above and next to the headlight. Those are actually a little bit brighter than you would expect. And these are reflector style headlights, no projector beams here. I'll show you how well they actually do in just a second. And you'll see the fog lights, those LED fog lights are just on the Touring model. It's nice to see that Honda actually gives you an LED turn signal as well that's integrated well right underneath that daytime running light. I'm not sure if the LED turn signal is on every trim or not, um, but at least this Touring gets it. And you'll see the amber colored marker light right there on the side. And for more details, be sure to check out my daytime review in the description below. But you see the turn signal in the mirror? That's just on the Touring, the LED signal in the mirror. So I'm wondering if that's the same case with that blinker in the front. But as you know, this is a brand new design and this is the Lunar Silver Paint. And what do you think of the design? What do you think of the paint? Again, check out my full review for more details. And then on the back, every trim level is gonna give you LED tail light and brake lights as well. But even on this Touring, you still get the standard incandescent bulb for the turn signal. At least it's amber color. Um, it's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but it is an amber bulb. Those look like LED license plate lights as well. And these are definitely different LED tail lights compared to the like claw type before. What do you think of these other one, of these new ones? And let's look at the brake lights and reverse lights. And under here, there's no power trunk or anything like that. But there is one little light back here. It's very, very, very faint. It's just a little incandescent bulb and it's really dim. It'd be nice to see a little bit more light back here, but at least you get something. When you have equipment back here, you'll probably be able to see it, but it's pretty dim. And look at this metallic flake on this Lunar Silver. I think it looks pretty nice. And in the back seat, so you've got LED lighting on the interior of this one. So you can see up above that light is nice and bright. It really lights up this back seat pretty well. And in the back seat, even the window switch has a backlight. Plus you get backlit USB ports back here too. And the good stuff is on the inside. Now the thing is there's no special approach lighting or anything special like that. The door handles don't light up either, but you've got bright LED lights inside of here as well. These are leather seats on the Touring model. I give you more details in the full review, but let's go ahead and hop in. Also, one thing I don't always touch on is puddle lamps. There are no puddle lamps by your feet on this model. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this interior and I'll go over all the lights and the light controls and what's illuminated and what isn't. But as always, starting over on the door, you'll find that all the mirror controls are pretty well backlit, the lock buttons, and then even all of the window switches are illuminated as well. There is zero lighting in the door handle or the foot wells or the cup holders, anything like that, zero ambient lighting down there. But the first light next to the steering wheel is actually a dial for interior brightness. It's right here where I'm covering that up. You can turn that up or down and that changes the brightness of this screen and your main screen and even all of the controls as well, like the lighting around the dials. There's even a little bit of overhead ambient lighting. All of that is dimmed and controlled with that switch, which is wonderful. There's also parking sensors, all of your Honda safety stuff and traction control. And there's a backlit trunk opening button over there. All the lighting on both sides of the steering wheel, all the buttons are illuminated. It's pretty basic and it's all got the white backlighting. And then this giant digital display is standard on the Touring. You'll get a smaller digital display on the other trim levels. I'll go into this in a little bit more detail in the full review, but this is nice and bright and vibrant and very clear and easy to see with quite a bit of information that you can see and it's semi-customizable. And then the main screen over here, this is a nine inch screen here. You'll get a seven inch screen on all of the lower Lower trims but this touring gives us the top nine inch screen and you can see you've got a couple of physical buttons on the left including this nice ring around the volume and power knob even seeking button so I'm glad to see a volume knob from Honda never know if you're gonna get that but the screen is easy to see it's easy to operate you have a home button it looks very similar to other Honda products and again I'll go through more details in a little bit in the full review but if you go to vehicle settings 
and then we go to lighting setup. This is where you can turn off your automatic high beams, which I'll go through in a little bit. Same with the lighting sensitivity, but that's really about it. You can't adjust much else with the headlights. Now the headlights are all controlled with this switch on the left. You can keep it on automatic mode and then the automatic high beams can kick on. Um, you can move it forward for high beams or you know pull it back for quick high beams. Parking lights or running lights and then your regular headlights or you can turn them all off by going into that. Your fog light control right here. And by the way, this Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is wireless on this top touring trim. And down below, you saw just a second ago, you've got all these illuminated rings, which look really nice, very crisp. This is the dual zone climate control down here, all of the buttons. Plus you've even got a couple of backlit USB ports and a nice, soft, gentle light of ambient lighting on the wireless charging mat. That is a wireless charging mat down there or a little storage area if you want to use it as that. That charging mat is just on the touring trim. And then right here you can kind of see there's a little bit of light. So you've got your shifter controls, a couple of illuminated buttons that I'll show you in a second. But there's a little bit of overhead ambient lighting coming down on there. So I have it covered up and then I uncovered it. You can tell a little bit of a difference and when it's really dark it actually makes a pretty big difference. It's right up overhead. So you've got this light and this light. So it's nice that Honda added this. I'm not sure what trim levels. I couldn't find any information, but obviously we have it on the touring. Maybe you have it on lower trims. I'm not sure. But you also have individual light controls. These are LED lights. They are actually really bright. I'll show you in a second. And you can even control whether the lights turn on or don't turn on when you open your door or you can turn them both on with that. But back down here by the shifter, these are your controls, your drive modes, auto stop, start, parking brake, and brake hold. And when you change your drive modes, it can even change the color of your gauges, like sport or green uh, for economy mode. Then going back to the armrest, there is absolutely zero light inside the armrest, nothing at all. I'd like to see something in there, but there's nothing. And then opening the glove box, there is a light in there. It's not a very big glove box though. And right up overhead, you've got an automatic dimming rear view mirror with garage controls. The auto dimming mirror with garage controls is only on the touring model. It's not totally frameless, but there is a bezel or like an edge that is not dimming. So there can be some light that is annoying on this mirror. And Honda gives you a vanity light as well on every trim. Now a quick look at the headlight beam pattern right in front of us. So the low beams have a pretty good spread all the way across. It's a pretty straight line as well. There's more of a dip once you get off into the distance that I'll show you in a second. Now the high beams, bright right in front, pretty narrow, pretty low high beam. And then off to the side, fog lights right there do give you a little bit of lighting to the side. These are not cornering lights and there's no adaptive function. So you just have the LED high low beam and LED fog light. And at the time of this video, there's no IIHS headlight rating, which is a bummer, but I'll give you my best opinion in a bit. Now for a look at long distance with these headlights. So at the end of this parking lot, I've always kind of lined up with those red posts and the fire hydrant, and those are pretty well illuminated, just like most vehicles are. But on the driver's side, that's pretty low and pretty dim. You can't even see the hill with that. So that's kind of a bummer. I'm curious to see how they are on the road, but the high beams, pretty good mostly pretty narrow like they're usually supposed to be but let's get them out on the road all right y'all let's get going on the test drive of this honda civic so you got to see the headlights up close against the wall and off in the distance but we'll get them out on the road on some dark roads and see how they do now my whole goal with this video is to give you an idea of what it's like to drive this new civic at night time and see whether or not you're comfortable with it if it meets your expectations or beats your expectations and i'll give you my inputs and my thoughts on how well they do compared to some other cars too we'll start with this point of view camera and then we'll switch over to the other camera and get a closer look at the headlights on some dark roads i'll have the automatic high beams on to start with and we'll kind of turn those off and on and just see how they do in responding to traffic and street lights too if you want more driving impressions, uh, especially a daytime drive, be sure to check out my daytime review in the description below. But let's go ahead and get pedaled down on this turbo four cylinder. And it is paired with the CVT. You've got a little bit of an interesting shift pattern, but it actually pulls pretty hard for being such a little engine. It's really not too bad. Now I have the automatic high beams on Currently the low beams are on, probably because we have vehicles in front of us, vehicle on the other side. 
So it's good to see that we haven't blinded anybody yet. And um, for reference, the rear view mirror is automatic dimming on this touring model. The side mirror is not dimming on any model. In overall ambiance, before we get on a dark road, I like it in here. I wish we had a little more ambient lighting in the doors or at our feet or just a little bit of something extra. Like a lot of cars are starting to give you multiple colors, options, and things like that. But it's still nice in here. Everything is backlit. Everything looks good. And there's a little bit of ambient lighting coming from overhead, which is much, much appreciated. Now that car just went around the corner, so it's out of our sight. But the street lights are enough to keep the low beams on and keep the high beams off. So we'll see how sensitive they are when we get on a dark road. Now we're about to get on a dark road and I'm going to leave the automatic high beam function on and let's switch over to the new camera right now. So the low beams, oh, the high beams just kicked on. It's really bright right in front of me and I can see pretty good off into the distance with those. Now I switch to the low beam so you can see the beam pattern and as the car straightens out, okay, so I can see good into the corner. We have this corner coming up. Like I said, these are not adaptive, so they don't move side to side like some. But this looks pretty good so far. It's definitely good on my lane. A little better than I was actually expecting. Low beams are still on. I'm going to keep those on for a sec. And good distance when they can stretch out. You can see the street markers up there. And they're a little bit, the distance I think is better than I expected. It's not great on the, oh, it's not great at all on the oncoming traffic side. But let me turn these high beams on. Actually, shoot. Automatic high beams back on, going around the corner. So the high beams kicked on. Nice and bright around the corner. High beams are great. Visibility is good off to the left around that corner too. And the high beams are staying on. Oh, they just shut off. So that street light actually shut them off and they turned back on. So you can see really far out in front with the high beams. Now the low beams, they're a little bit better than I thought, but not great. Not great. So now fog lights are off looking in the peripherals. They're actually pretty wide. The beam pattern is wider than I thought, especially off to the right. Now fog lights off. Fog lights to the left, on, off. So the width is good. I think the width is, is better than I expected compared to what I had in the parking lot. The cutoff is definitely pretty significant on the oncoming traffic side, which is normal. Now we'll have the automatic high beams on. So, so far I think these are doing a good job. These are definitely not the best that I've seen, but they're doing a good job, especially considering the price and the class, you know. So there's a car crossing and it did not turn my high beams off. So it kind of blinded that car. Some vehicles will turn the high beams off with crossing traffic, but apparently this doesn't. So, so far, what do you guys think of the headlights? Get up to speed and the high beams turned on. We'll see if we get some oncoming traffic here. And there is some road noise in here. I'm curious to do some decibel ratings, but you'll get those in the full review. High beams just turned off. staying off oh they turned back on there's a car coming and they turned off okay so they were pretty quick they were a little slow to turn back on but they turned off immediately uh, so the only blinding we did was the crossing traffic person but headlights seem to do okay not the best not the worst I'm just glad that we have these LED headlights standard on every trim but thank you so much for tuning in be sure to check out the full review and we'll catch you guys next time